Good day guys, it's your boy Dino from Zaxi Petrology and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we are reviewing the Mazda CX-30, priced at 564000 and some change. This car is powered by a 2-litre engine, which produces uh, 121 kilowatts and 213 litres of torque. Uh, this is the individual package, the top of the range package, but there is also a carbon edition, which has black down rims and stuff. That's the one I actually really do like. But we have this one on test in a nice, Pearl white color, it's what it's called to me. I don't want to confuse the names, but it's pearl white, I'm sure. With some 18 inch ALA rims. Not a really bad looking car. We had the CX30, no, CX3 on test previously with the same color. Uh, the only difference between, I feel, between the two is that that one was the Hikari version, not the individual. And that one had a sun. There was no sun roofs on the CX30s, disappointment for me. But everything else in terms of the looks of the cars, it looks beefier as an SUV it should be. It's a crossover. And the conclusion I've came to is this is sort of like your mom's car. Lady who's working wants a proper safe car. Hi, it feels safe, it feels sturdy and firm. And the looks in general are just they work for me. Not that it's a bit of a looker. Uh, my my judgment may be different from yours, but we start off in the front. It's always I always tell you guys about the eyes. It's the eyes chico. Doesn't really have those proper LED lights that actually ring it out for you. But the front it looks similar to the CX-5, the modern ones and everything and it actually really does work out on the car. Coming onto the side, a lot of the cars like people mentioning, they have the black uh, side fenders and really just to add the brief nice and the size of the car to the width of the car. Um, there's really nothing much on the outside. It's basically standard but it looks proper. Um, for once, compared to the CX-30, I would say the exhausts here do actually match. Unlike in the CX-30 where I feel like they are standing out too much and don't really fit too much. This one specifically, they really do stand. Uh, as you can see, it's the CX30 badge there and it's a Sky Active D. I like the real lights. These are beautiful LED lights. You see them in the night. I'll try and take pictures in the evening so that you actually really do see how these lights are actually sequenced. And I feel like on the outside, um, news flash, as I was driving the car during the week, I got a puncher. I had to change the wheel and everything. But one thing I do like about this wheel, I like those normal spare tires you get, which are very, very thin. And it's actually almost the same size as that tire and it keeps the firmness of the car so without further ado let's really hop onto the car and we'll hop into the inside of the car okay jumping onto the inside uh, the first thing we're going to do is just start the car and you get that cx3 light up display you also have head up display as you can see right there and then move on to the infotainment system with accompanied by all this leather excuse me the car is very dirty i'm supposed to take it to the car wash but it's been rainy and I just wanted to do the videos and stuff and get um, over with it. But then, yeah, back to the video. We have a lot of brown and black leather. Makes it feel old, but makes it feel luxurious and comfortable. They've really done a lot. Unlike the CX-3 Richard Alcantara, this has some nice leather. I don't like the color. Brown makes me feel like I'm old. And, ooh, I'm sure you noticed something there. We have 12 speakers, all from Bose, with a nice subwoofer. The sound quality in this car is, oof. Out of this world guys out of this world um coming here running low on fuel i know i've been averaging around nine uh 8.5 to 9 liters per 100 kilometers it's not really bad and everything else just seems simple there's no tire pressure warnings and stuff i wish it did since as i said i got the punch out of the outside but everything else on this car is pretty simple and straight to the point i've traveled 923 kilometers in this car there it is so I got it, so it's not bad. I've poured fuel a couple of times. Full tank in this car will cost you around about 1.1, 1.2, if I'm not mistaken, since I did my calculations and I did pour fuel twice, but I was not pouring full tank. Moving on to the infotainment system. Um, there's just a few things that you can have here. Vehicle status, just to check if everything is okay with the car. Next service and all that. Simple things. And uh, we also have the fuel efficiency monitor that's telling me how much I've been averaging, averaging on my past trips. I think the maximum is five trips. On this one, as I said, it is nine. And uh, we can go back. And one thing I wanted to mention about the display. I enjoy this. I like this display. In the CX3, uh, CX the display was touchscreen and you could also use this. Thing is, you couldn't use touchscreen while you were driving. You could only use it uh, while you were parked in the car stationary. Now, with this one, there's no touchscreen. Everything's down to here, and it's, I feel like it's simple and better that way. You know, the gearbox with the pedal shifts, this one also has this. And then, entertainment. 
we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, sponsored by the Bose Sound System. Perfect, perfection, the best you can ever ask for. Communication is for when you have your phone connected and stuff like that. You really don't. It's a very simple process. The navigation in here, I tried to use it, as you say, is it telling me about SD card. I think you need to get it from Mazda and stuff. I wonder why they didn't input it into this one. Um, the settings are very general. I've always been, oh, in terms of in display, I can change the various settings into the instrument cluster. Which one is it? The, the center display, which one? Yes, the active driving display. I can change the brightness, I can tilt it, and, and a whole lot of things, which I feel like these, these are very important things, and I'm glad they are in here. You set them to your own perfect preference. Also, we have a setting here when you come here for your seats. Uh, I'm going to say this is a car driven by you and your husband. You can have the, the car in the first setting, you know, I just press with the setting and it's set. It really takes me low and you see, it's just dropping me automatically the setting to the person that's used to it. Or the second one, if the person is a very short person, you set it to that one and it takes you up at the specific height of a person. So those are the few things which I actually do enjoy about the technology in this car. Um, other than that, everything else is just simple. Again, I do say, guys, excuse the car being dirty. Um, some more leather here. This is pretty, actually, big. I can't open it now. Ah. Yeah, get it open. Big space here in the middle. Accompanied by the looks in here. You can close this. This looks like carbon fiber. I don't know if this is real carbon fiber or it's just uh, plastic work. But it really does look, as I said, there's a lot of, there's a luxury feel and look to this car, which I really do appreciate. This car really does make its point. It has its target market. All those that are the target market are happy with it. Uh, right now, as you can't see this, when there's passengers in the back, it really does light here that there's passenger, one or two or three doesn't have their seat belt on and a couple of other warnings here. And we have some nice little black leather with some brownish stitching. I think it's going along with this. And everything in this car just feels modern and subtle. The air conditioning system, which I really do need on right now, is that if I put it on, you guys won't hear me, but let me turn it on um, for my sake for the two minutes. But it's pretty simple. You can have it synced so that both of you guys and both the passengers, you guys have the same heat or everybody can go individual. The person on that side can go high. I can stay on my low and you can change a bunch of settings and it's a really, pretty, pretty neat system but overall yes but uh, coming to the final conclusion of what i'm saying i really like the cx30 obviously my favorite thing is the sound system the bose sound system uh, is the wheel spare the rear wheel which uh, had problems went into a portal sort of bit of danger but this is what i want to show you guys the bose sound woofer uh guys if this car didn't have this i was gonna be complaining about a lot that sound system just makes it a lot better for a lot of things now my plates fall off wow <laughs> in conclusion um i'm in love with the cx30 uh it's a car i would consider for my mom or for someone a lady who's looking to just really get a proper setup for car it's stunning the price 564,600. <laughs> A bit of a few comments there but uh you you're paying you're paying it, it's worth the price it's a mazda it's built well and it lasts you for the long run it's made with soul guys it's mazda anyway please very much like share and subscribe guys catch you on the next one